Hello everybody and welcome back to our multiplayer game tutorial. Uh, so in this video I was planning on doing uh, finding LAN servers and so we can join them. So basically I was planning on doing like uh, finding games that are running, running on our local network, displaying them to the user and connect to them. Now I actually did it and my Camtasia crashed twice actually. So if I, I tried to do another one and this is actually voiceover of me uh, narrating over the second video that I tried to explain to you, so I'm really sorry for that. But as you can see, we already have like um, an option for that for the LAN games where I can see uh, uh, the running games. So, and we can either go back to the main menu or join uh, an actual game. So, as you can see, we have like the IP of that game, the server name, my server. Uh, so, we have like two clients connected out of four. And we also have like a simple server description, playing for fun in this case. Now this could be whatever you want. Um, so we, if you have like uh, different server modes, uh, then like zombies, survival, team deathmatch, or what, you can send it there. Now from in my case, I've just sent it. I sorry, sent. Uh, I can't speak English. I just sent um, a simple like message, playing for fun, or whatever. Uh, so as you can see we can still like connect to the game and play with them and stuff so yeah so now I'm just gonna have to like go over it um, so as I as I said I'm really sorry for that the, this was not supposed to happen but my uh, recording software actually crashed not even once but twice so I'm really sorry about that so this is the server object right and as you can see we already we created a s another socket which is a broadcast socket right and um, so we we are using the UDP protocol now make sure that to use the UDP protocol this is very important and we also using it, the network create socket extended version so make sure to add EXT at the end right this function allows us to add another argument which is the broadcast import now the broadcast import must be different than um, the server port the one that we are like running the main server in all right so make sure to not use the same port as um, as the game so as you can see we have like 45,000 as the game port and the broadcast port is like 45 and 1 okay so keep that in mind we also have to create uh, a broadcast buffer now the broadcast buffer shouldn't have like um, a size too big so I've chosen uh, a thousand bytes which is like more than enough in this case because we're not going to send like too much data and we're also gonna send it like once every second it's not like uh, it's not that big of a deal um, so as you can see you know broadcast buffer we created the same way uh, we have a thousand bytes buffer duo the alignment of one nothing nothing too crazy now we also have like uh, called alarm zero which is going to be row speed so we're going to call it like uh, a second from now and I've also like added obviously the variables that you want to send in my server and the server description now in the alarm zero obviously we want to like keep sending it every second so we call it um, in the alarm zero itself now in here well this is like the basic uh, buffer writing thing so we seek the start of the buffer, make sure it is the broadcast buffer, not your uh, game buffer. And we're writing like the, um, the server name and the and description as a string. The DSLIT start, which is going to return the current connected client's number and the maximum client. Now for when we send the buffer, uh, we're sending it over the local network. So everyone in our local network can see it. So we use network send broadcast, all right, not network send packet. We use this is the server. All right, so we're using the server from the game, which is the TCP server, but this this function allows us to uh, specify the broadcast import, which is in this case uh, 45M1. Okay, and um, so make sure again this is not the same port that uh, your game is running it. Okay, and uh, we specify the buffer and the buffer size. Now we've seen these things before, so it's nothing new. Now the only t change in the client is that uh, so we see like the IP that we're connecting to 
now it's a global variable so global.ip previously it was a fixed string which is like 127.0.0.1 uh, all right now it is a global variable which is in the obj menu which is gonna get uh, to in a second so as, a, as again for the server create the socket the buffer as UDP the socket needs to be UDP not the buffer doesn't make sense not the buffer in UDP but anyway uh, two server variables so the name description call the alarm zero keep calling every second write to the buffer data that you want to send send it using broadcast and that's it now we want to receive this data right and we receive it from the OBJ menu because this is the lobby that is gonna receive these uh, things so as you can see I have another option uh, LAN game this is the third option and in the server list so in the server I have the server list variable which is gonna basically a switch for uh, if we want to show the server list or not okay and yeah that's pretty much it I have a global.ip string so now it's a global variable which is in here and uh, so in the very bottom you can see that I'm making like uh, DS list for every data that we want to send I've also created a, a broadcast server and uh, so make sure to create it in the broadcast port and check if it's gonna fail or not so because this could fail since uh, we could be running two instances of the game now actually I forgot to talk about the server for a second now I'm gonna get back to it now a second yeah I'm gonna realize soon that I didn't talk about the broadcast server so yeah um, so this is like the broadcast server okay I create a server using the UDP protocol and the broadcasting port and choose like a, a maximum client this this could be high uh, doesn't really matter it's it should be high actually and we're checking if it's failed then we need to tell the user to uh, we couldn't create a broadcast server trying to join a game manually so because this could fail if uh, we're running two instances of the game at the same time and they're both in the lobby because in the destroy event we're destroying it so if we run another instance after that then we should be good um, so okay I don't know what I'm talking here yeah I can't really remember because I lost the recording from that one as well I, I mean I lost like the voice from that one I don't know what's wrong with Contagia hopefully I'm recording this as well I'm not really sure but I should be uh, so yeah in the destroy event uh, we are destroying the server and stuff now this is the networking event right and in here we are uh, well receiving the IP so this uh, from the async load map we receive the IP uh, we get the buffer we get the data that we are sending or receiving sorry from the buffer so as you can see we have the name description client max client now the name and description are both buffer string um, the clients and max clients are buffers you wait okay and now um, we want to check if we already have infos about the server from the I that specific IP address that sent us this information so we want to check if it already exists in our list so if it does exist then we want to update its info for example uh, the clients the, or the maximum client um, I don't know maximum client shouldn't be changed anyway but I'm doing it here for some reason I don't know why um, so we we're gonna keep updating server name clients max client descriptions anyway um, otherwise so in the second else statement then that means that server that didn't we we didn't have any info about that server so we're gonna add it instead so we're gonna use ds list add and make sure to like add the IP as well okay this is very important because if you don't add it uh, index is always gonna be negative one which is gonna make us keep adding stuff to the ds list it doesn't make sense um, so yeah now in the draw GUI event um, we just we're just gonna draw the servers themselves so as you can see this is from the previous tutorial right from picking name we're gonna draw the name right um, otherwise if we are picking the server list or choosing browsing the server list we want to loop through every uh, server draw it on the screen 
and so this is like a title right so color orange growing title in the middle of screen local game uh, this variable I don't really need it so yeah we're gonna get rid of it so we have a variable I make sure to create it outside of the loop right this is very important create the variable outside of the loop because we're gonna use it after for the back button um, so inside inside the loop we get in like we're looping through every IP address get the name of that IP get uh, the name the description the clients max clients all this stuff about the specific server and we're gonna draw them now here's the code so if we are currently selecting this server then we're gonna draw it using the green color otherwise we're gonna draw it with white and um, so we're drawing the text we're drawing the IP dash name dash string max uh, sorry client plus uh, slash maximum clients and dash description uh, you can like use any way to like uh, print your data to the clients or to the player but I just chose uh, a different uh, a simple way just draw everything in the same line and that's it um, also when we finish the loop we also need to draw the back button right that's why I kept the I uh, index which actually should be uh, I equal var I equals zero to like avoid any uh, I don't know what could happen, what could go wrong if we didn't like initialize variable. I think game maker should initialize it to zero anyway. But as it, uh, as I said, you know, if we are hovering hovering over the draw back button, we're gonna choose the green color, otherwise white, and we're drawing it after the PSD. So I think I'm gonna initialize the i variable here to zero, just in case. Okay, even though it should be zero uh, by default for for game maker, I think I'm not sure. Uh, so now in the step event now in the step event I uh, will um, Basically so we have a new options right this is these are from the previous one switching the index and stuff um, Now here's here's the thing So we see this uh, If not server list that we want the current index to be between um, Clamp from 0 to a relay length the menu otherwise we want it to be between zero and the DS list size server IPs because if we want to if we, want, if we are browsing the servers that we want to like get in the range now in inside the current index switch statement and I'm pretty sure I didn't talk about it in this video you notice that in the case 2 which uh, used to be the quit button this is now a new function this has a new function it has server list equals true so don't focus on what I am hovering with the mouse Oh, what's happening? Oh my god, I lost the re What's happening? I can't see anything on the screen. Oh my god, oh my god. I actually can't see anything on the screen, hold on. Oh my god. Okay, I'm back. Um, okay, so in the case 2, server list equals true, and case and uh, current index equals 0. Um, in here, we'll basically... Um, we want the back button to like send us back to the main menu so we're just gonna server list equals false otherwise it's gonna be global.ip equals this let's find it so we're grabbing the IP from the current server that we are choosing and we go to the next room to um, well to basically connect to it because if you remember the IP of the server or the client is gonna is global variable now and it's gonna be replaced for, by um, the one from this server that we are picking okay uh, I think I'm gonna go to the client object again just to uh, show you guys um, yeah so I'm just talking about some stuff <laughs> Again, I'm really sorry, this was not supposed to happen. Uh, yeah, as you can see, so in the client, we're using the global IP variable. And yeah, so I'm running the game now. And so we're just gonna wait for it. Now I have um, a game running already. It has two clients in there. And I'm trying to connect to one of them. I'm sorry, to the game because they are both in the same game not two different games but you know so um, 
And actually I discovered a bug as well because we're not freeing the characters that uh, that get picked and then their client disconnects. So we need to like put them back in the available technically. Now this is very important. Make sure to allow access to uh, the game, to your firewall. Otherwise the broadcast server won't work. So even if that doesn't pop up, go to your firewall options and allow it in your game. Okay, this is very important. Otherwise the broadcast server won't work. Okay, now I'm gonna choose a name and browse some LAN games. So as you can see, we're just getting this stuff and we already have two clients in there. Now, just to make sure that it is updated, I'm gonna create another instance of the game and join. And we should see the, uh, the clients go from two to three. As you can see, I get this message because the broadcast server is already created and this client is already, or this instance of the game is already using it. So we can have two mobbies in the same uh, computer. So, um, so yeah, so I'm not sure what I'm doing here, but um, yeah, I think I closed the game by accident. So I'm gonna run another one. Yeah, so here it is. I get the same message, error message. So this popped up on my other screen. And so now I'm gonna join like the game the normal way, right? Gonna join, oh, okay. Mm, yeah, so I can't see like uh, the service list on the second client because the, the first one is using the broadcast uh, server, right? Now we can pick characters. Now here's the bug. We're not freeing the characters that have been picked and their users left. So we have this to fix in the next video, and um, so yeah. Now I'm gonna just pick a character, I think. Now here I'm just talking about like the bug or the glitch, whatever you name it. It's a bug, not a glitch. Ah, okay. Actually, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, the game still works, and as you can see in the first instance of the game, um, well, the clients get updated or the clients number. Uh, and I can still join if I press the enter button, okay? And here I am, in the game, playing with them. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm really sorry for this, guys. This was not supposed to happen. I don't know what's wrong with Camtasia. Um, yeah, hopefully this is the last time it's gonna happen. Uh, and yeah, so that was all for today, guys. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed the video. I'll try to provide the link for the project so we can actually compare the codes. Um, and yeah, so I think that's it. I think I'm doing like the outro here or something. I don't know. Yeah, so that was it for today, guys. I hopefully you enjoyed the video. And I'll catch you guys next time. Peace. Goodbye. I don't know what I'm talking here. I don't know. Okay, the video is still going, so I'm gonna keep talking for like three seconds and stop. Okay. See you.